All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the final method that we're gonna learn in this section, and that's the declining method. So let's again, kind of review these methods and why we use these methods. So here we go. A method is basically a process of the allocation of a cost over the useful life. And so in this case, this is an allocation approach. We need a method, so companies can really choose any method that they would like. Um, but in this case, we're talking about the declining method. So let's talk about the declining balance method. So the assumption here is that the asset is more useful at the beginning of its life than it is towards its end. Its end usually is a uh, has a lot of repairs that have to be done, maintenance downtime. So the usefulness of the asset is more at the beginning than at the end. And so this might be the reason why companies use declining is because they feel like their assets are more useful at the beginning and they should take more depreciation at the beginning. So we allocate the same method as straight line. The only difference here really is that we're gonna increase the percentage to 150 or 200%. Now, for all intents and purposes, when you see declining method, unless otherwise told, just assume it's 200%. So assume it's 200% unless otherwise told to use 150%. So let's kind of walk you through what this would look like. So to do the declining balance method, we're gonna take the cost and we're gonna subtract accumulated depreciation. So notice we're not subtracting residual value. Cost minus accumulated depreciation, and then we're gonna multiply it by two divided by useful life. So notice that we have two. So two would be 200%. So if you were asked to then calculate this for 150, you would use 1.5 instead of two. So cost minus accumulated depreciation times two divided by useful life will give you your depreciation expense. And again, notice we're not using residual value at all in this equation. We will need it because we wanna make sure that we don't depreciate any, uh, depreciate our assets below that residual value. So we still need it, but we won't use it in our calculation here. So cost minus accumulated depreciation times two divided by the useful life equals depreciation expense. And again, the two represents 200%. If it's 150%, you'll put 1.5 and then do the calculation like you would normally do. All right, so what about that residual, residual value? So in declining balance, we do not use the residual value initially. Instead, we make sure sure that we depreciate, we, as we depreciate, we do not depreciate more than our depreciable base, AKA do not let book value go under residual value. So we've been talking about that in the last couple lessons that our uh, ending book value in year 10 is our residual value and we need to keep it that way. Same thing applies here, okay? So let's look at an example here. We've got our same example. The only difference here between this example and the last couple of lessons is that we are going to use declining balance. So assume on January 1, 20X1, company A purchased a piece of equipment for $295,000. The company is expected to use the equipment for 10 years and then dispose of it by selling it in the secondary market for $55,000. The company uses the double declining balance method, meaning 200% double the straight line uh, to allocate depreciation expense. What is the depreciation expense for year one? So if you hear double, that means 200%. So double declining would be 200%. All right. So cost minus accumulated depreciation times two divided by its useful life will give us our depreciation for year one. So let's go ahead and plug in some information that we already know. Our cost here is $295,000. Our accumulated depreciation in year one is zero because we don't have it because we haven't actually depreciated anything up until now. So we're going to subtract zero and then we're going to multiply that by two divided by its useful life. Our useful life is 10. And I should clarify, when we say accumulated depreciation, we mean accumulated depreciation prior to taking the depreciation in this year. So notice that we haven't taken any depreciation yet, so it's zero. So accumulated depreciation before we take this depreciation. Because I know what you're saying. You're saying, wouldn't it be whatever happens now, but we get this circular warning like on Excel, can't do it, can't compute. So 295 minus zero, and then next year we'll have an accumulated depreciation with this answer. All right, so 295 minus zero times two divided by 10 gives us 
$59,000. So in year one, we're going to take $59,000 of depreciation expense because we said that we're using this in instances where we believe that the assets are more useful at the very beginning than at the very end. End. So that's what our depreciation looks like. Now, let me walk you through what this would look like over the 10 year period that we own this asset. And you're going to find some surprising things. So let's walk through this here. Notice in year one, our depreciation expense is $59,000, which means that the accumulated depreciation at the end of the year is $59,000. That's the number we're going to use in year two. So in year two, we'll take uh, $295,000 minus $59,000 times two divided by 10. So, so those still stay the same, two divided by 10. So then when we do that, we're going to get 47,200. Then we're going to add that to last year's accumulated depreciation. That gives us 102, sorry, 106,200. That 106,200 is our accumulated depreciation prior to taking any depreciation in year three. So when we calculate depreciation in year three, we're going to take 295 minus 106,200. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 divided by 10, and that's going to give us our 37,760. And we're going to keep on doing that until we get to the point where our book value equals our residual value. If you notice here, that happens here in year 8. So in year 8, our notice our book value is equal to our residual value. At that point, we stop and we don't take any more depreciation. Why? Because we can't go any further. Now, if you even notice, if you calculate year eight's depreciation, I promise you that it's gonna be more than 6,866, but the problem is if I can't go below residual value, then I'm just gonna to have to subtract this number from this number and I'm going to get 6,866. So in that final year in which you can take depreciation, it's usually not going to be the same calculation that you've been using because you can't go under residual value in your book year book value. So in this case, we're going to book the 6,866 in depreciation expense and then we're done. 2009, 2000X9, 2000X10, we're just going to leave it. No depreciation expense in those years because we've accelerated depreciation to years one, two, and three. So that's what we do there. Um, so if you're trying to do this table and you're like, doesn't that make sense? It probably doesn't make sense. So just deal with it. All right, so that is the understanding of the impact of the declining method. If we look at the graphical look, it looks very different than the last two lessons. In this case, depreciation expense, uh, we kind of get this like drop off here and then it drops off to zero because there is no depreciation. And you notice that we have a steeper climb here with the accumulated and then we start to level off here and we're gonna level off at $55,000. Well in this case, 240,000, we're going to level off at 240,000 because we can't take any more depreciation. So again, it looks very different than our last other lessons. Now, if we compare this with straight line and units production, you notice that declining, now that we've zoomed in here, uh, is very steep. So we've got this very steep declining method. And then straight line is obviously straight. And then we've got um, units of production, which just kind of just goes up and it's based on production. So it really doesn't matter that we're comparing it, um, but we kind of have that. So that's what it looks like when we look at kind of comparing all three and what they would look on our graph. So that is a look at the declining balance method of depreciation. Like I said before, just assume that it's 200% unless otherwise told. If it says double decline, that means 200%. It would need to state that it was 150% if you were going to use anything, well, 150%. So follow that rule and then make those changes on the calculation. Now, when we're talking about depreciation, especially for declining, use a table create an Excel, create a chart, write in the chart, because you're gonna, if you do that, you're gonna keep all your numbers straight as you go along, especially when you need the book value to calculate next year's depreciation expense. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video.
Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.